everyone and welcome to the third episode of Bassman Studio. Today we'll be doing a watercolor here in beautiful Puerto Rico and I thank you very much for joining me and please subscribe to my channel at the end of this video. So let's begin our third lesson. Here we're going to start using watercolors. Here's my palette and everything else I need, my brushes and water and uh, my pencil so we can start drawing. And this is our view. It's quite lovely in a quiet park in San Juan. And here I already started on my drawing. Very simple. As you can see, no detail as usual. And uh, before we add detail, we just want to make sure the drawing is correct and everything is as it should be. So we're just adding a few more details. So now we could start adding color, starting with the background. Remember, keeping it very loose and very simple, just like when we were using oil. And very light. So remember, you always want to start from the back forward. And again, we don't worry about any of the small things yet. And we're just going around the picture to put in the sky. And this is going to pull our drawing forward. And just adding some yellow to put in some sunlight. As it's a beautiful sunny day here. Now we're going to add, now again, keeping, starting from the back forward, now we're going to add some water. And of course, watercolor is very, uh, keeps you from adding detail very quickly, so you could keep it loose for a very long time. It takes a little bit more control than oil, in a sense. But you want to keep it watery, not too much water, just a, enough. And you don't want to add too much water. If you add too much water to your pigment, it'll run. So you just want to add just enough to move it around the paper. And the paper is watercolor paper, so it's absorbent. And it's made to take watercolor. So it's just like painting in oil. The method is the same. So you just want to go all around your drawing, putting in color where there is no color. So again, what we call blocking in, in painting. And now we can start working on even the bigger shapes, such as the tree in the left. And we're just putting a general color down not worrying about anything, any detail or anything like that. As you can see, I'm keeping it very loose. And very large, large masses of color. They may not be exactly the same color you see up there, but you want to get cl as close to the tone that you're seeing as possible. And we, we have one mass of tree, and it's a beautiful big tree, so...
And we could also start working on the foreground. Again, keeping it just big masses of color. And going all around your painting. Remember, you don't want to focus just on one area of your painting, but everywhere. You can worry about the little things later. So just keep it very bold and very big. And here we can start working on the tree in the foreground. And that helps us, as you can see, it helps push the background further back. So we have what we call contrast. And again, we just keep it very simple. Another great thing about watercolor is it keeps you from adding detail. It keeps you very loose and thinking in big terms too. So it's, it's great practice for oil as well. So in a way, it's also good to warm up with a watercolor before you start an oil painting. It's a good practice to do. So we're just working around, as you can see, in just very big, broad terms. And we have the benefit today of it being very beautifully and sunny, so we don't have to worry about the light changing on us too quickly, so we have time to work on it. San Juan is one of the oldest cities in the Americas, and it's very beautiful and picturesque. Many places to paint here that are very beautiful. I'm always surprised myself that there are more people painting around San Juan when I visit. It's such a beautiful city. And here we are, we're just going around the tree and still focusing on the leaves. And nature changes leaves so it could turn from a greenish blue to a yellowish blue, depending on where the sun's hitting it. This is where you have to train your eye to see. And here I'm going around the trunk of the tree, or the tree branch rather. And you can see it starts to form a picture. Even with no detail, you can start to see something happening. And see, it starts to form leaves of a tree in large mass. And here we can start working on the middle ground. So you see I'm just going around and I'm keeping everything as simple as I can and just putting in as much of the local color as I see. We could always blend later. Another beautiful thing about watercolor is that you could change it, you could blend, you can glaze with it.
it forces you to keep everything very loose. Now you can go as far as you want with watercolor and add amazing amounts of detail, but that's all up to you. It's a matter of personal preference. And here we're working on the middle ground. Shadows caused by objects in the middle ground. So you can see, once you start seeing your painting forming, actually taking in a shape, and you haven't put any detail, you know you're on the right track. And here we have the area right next to the large tree. And as you can see, you could change the tone, as I did, just did, just by adding a little bit of yellow and keeping it very wet and very loose. Again, too much water will just make your pigment look too not powerful enough. And of course, anything in foreground that's just going to be richer and deeper in color. Now this is a very large watercolor, but it's always a good practice to do small little watercolors, just for practice, just to keep your mind sharp. And now we could work on the right hand side of our picture. So once you've done, just like as we did with the, the oils that we've been doing and the drawing, once you've done every basic shape, and now we're just working on objects in the foreground. Now smaller objects. Now I'm using a smaller brush this time. You could switch brushes. And this, this requires a little bit more control. So this is where you want to slow down a little bit. It takes a little bit of practice, but with practice comes patience and knowledge. So not easy to do a straight line freehand, but again, with practice, you can do it. This is where we start working on the smaller things. And now I could work on the branch. Which will also help enhance the leaves on the tree. And as you see, now I, we can start working, as you see, I'm working on the shadows on the tree. So the tree starts coming forward a little bit more. This is where, I always say this is where the real magic happens, where you actually see your painting forming. So this is where you start adding shadows. And we could also start adding the waves on the water. Anything to help it come forward, to give it more shape. And I'm using a thinner brush, because now we want to work on a smaller scale, so we're using a smaller brush. And now we're pushing things forward, pushing things back, etc. 
and also using less water. Use less water for more detail. And this is where you ask yourself, well, how far do I want to go with my painting? How much detail do I want to add? You could always keep your painting very loose, as loose as you want. But you want to make sure that you're saying everything that you want to say in your painting. Don't stop uh, putting details just out of fear. Do it out of choice. No one wants to see an artist who's afraid of painting. And here we're going to start pushing things even more so, adding more deeper color. Just to push it forward, since it's in a shaded area, so... And I could keep working on the tree. So sometimes I get carried away. I start enjoying myself and I don't know when to stop. So it happens to everyone. And there's our finished watercolor. Quick and loose in a beautiful area in San Juan. And um, that's the end of our third lesson. So, hope you can try it too. So, that concludes the third episode of Basma Studio. It was certainly exciting drawing and painting here in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Uh, from all of us here in Puerto Rico, thanks for watching. And I hope you subscribe to Bassman Studio and stay tuned for the fourth video, which should be coming up very, very soon. Happy painting everyone and have a great day.